Fishing the DMV is the number one fishing show in our region, reaching thousands upon thousands of avid anglers and outdoor enthusiasts each and every week. As the show continues to grow, we are now actively looking for a company who would be interested in becoming the presenting partner of Fishing the DMV. If you are looking to promote your company to a highly engaged audience passionate about fishing, outdoor adventures, and conservation efforts in the Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania area, please email me, fishingthedmv at gmail.com. Again, if you're a company interested in joining and becoming a part of the number one fishing show that continues to grow in leaps and bounds each and every month, email me, fishingthedmv at gmail.com. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it downwind of you or yeah, we're what? Upwind of it. It, yeah, it's like it's going like that way. I, yeah, I don't know. It's going more north than we are. So, so there's a chance that you could die. That's yeah. a little one. We've got we're some. Gonna, we've got some friends. My mom just called me. She, we've got some friends that can't get to their house. Oh yeah, they've so got gonna, a bunch of roads closed down near us, yeah. and there's a shelter on the, at the fire department. Yeah, so we got people. Going. We got people that are gonna come in soon, and they're gonna just hang out until we're done. So, because it's kind of uh, there's like a bunch of people that can't get home. So, so you're doing a fishing podcast so where there's legitimately, podcast a where legitimately a disaster outside. Legitimately a disaster outside. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I think there's like three around us because out. You know where. The Walmart by in front. Rockland. Yeah, if you look down that way, yeah, that's just a giant smoke. <laughs> yeah, and then down at Morgan's Ford Road, there's another cloud of smoke, but it's not as big. <laughs> and like, then there's one right over the right over the road, power line. Yeah. Good lord! All right, Jesus Christ! Uh, all righty, let me get this dialed in here. And perfect. All right. And three. Uh, Matt, what how do I say your last name? Foreman. Foreman. Okay. Foreman. And then Dan. I always want to make sure about this. And then Daniel Litney? Litwin. 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 I make up words. I cannot read. I can speak though. <laughs> it's so weird with content creators. I don't know if I'm supposed to say their like normal name or just their their username. So it's like, should I just call you yeah. Big D? I call or should I just... <laughs> <laughs> That's what my friends call me. That's where I got the whole uh, nickname from. No one actually Noah's dad gave me the nickname when I was in like kindergarten. It, <laughs> it's so funny because like the first time when you won that contest, Billy Cole's calling. He's like, okay, this guy's name is Big D. What the hell is this guy <laughs> here? Yeah. He's like, I, you're just gonna have to find out, boss. That's that's why I told him. Um, <laughs> and three. Two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And today we're bringing back uh, the two guys of uh, really 81 dominance on the Shenandoah. We got Matthew Foreman and Daniel Litwin, or AKA Big D TV, uh, a, pot, a, a fantastic YouTube channel that, uh, what? I mean, you've hit a thousand subs, right? Where are yeah, you? Yeah. So during the winter, video slowed down a little bit. So I'm at like 654, I think. Dude, that's still, you're close to getting monetized. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm getting up there. So you go from a kayaking YouTuber on the Shenandoah, and then this story for today is y'all decide to hit the co-angling scene. Yep, yep, yep. So, How did that all that start? Yeah. yeah. So I went on a, well, with that guy trip that we won from your podcast, we went down there and we had a lot of fun with Billy. It was a slow day, but we just... It was a lot of fun being yeah. on the lake with like big water. It wasn't, it wasn't that slow of a day. Yeah. Well, I was throwing a glide baby the entire time. He was killing it on the drop shot. Yeah. yeah. Good. But anyways. Um, well, Billy, uh, the reason I was throwing the drop shot is because Billy was throwing it and like a six pounder followed it to the Love boat. It. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Can't talk. But that just made me like, man, that's awesome. I just want to see that happen. And never really did, but yeah. I still wanted to throw it the whole time. I had a lot of fun throwing it. And then I decided to take my dad down with him for his birthday slash father's day. And Billy told me that there's a BFL coming up and I should fish it as a co-angler. He said, as long as I catch like four fish, I'll probably win my money back. And he was right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's talk about so, that then, because like, were you guys like, 
having Billy or just or anyone just be like, I oh, should enter this tournament when you've never done something like this before is one thing. But then you like you sign up, you commit to it, and then you're driving down 81. Are you ever like, what the hell are we getting into? <laughs> we did. Yeah, I think I said that when we were going down. Yeah, because we had to we had to leave uh, pretty late because we had we had a commitment. And we ended up leaving at like 930 is when we left Front Royal to go down there. So it was like we got there like it was 1145 probably. Yeah. And, and that, we were like we were like, what is what is going on? Yeah, the and motel we were in, it was that's a whole story. We got like yeah. I maybe got like 30 minutes of sleep. I didn't so I didn't I didn't <laughs> sleep at all. Day. I was wide awake because yeah. I drank we drank energy drink. I had a Red Bull because yeah. I was driving oh, down. Yeah. So we were both like wide awake. We got no sleep. <laughs> um leading up to the tournament so yeah and it was yeah on the way down he was like we're not gonna catch a thing we're just going down here we're gonna stand in the rain <laughs> yeah, yeah well, i mean like it was definitely more in our favor so. well then let's let's kind of get right into her so the night before did you guys get now i'm assuming but did you guys get any practicing in the week of or did you just kind of roll right in on friday no, we rolled right in. I was texting Billy a bunch, asking him about the watercolor and what he thinks gonna do good as for yeah. us. As yeah, he did. Others. He did help us out a lot. And, yeah, uh, I did watch. Uh, he he was on here with you. Uh, yeah, we did watch that a, a few weeks ago, and and I watched that, and I was I was trying to get some information from that. Yeah. So but we hadn't. I don't think we'd fished for largemouth. Not. In like probably months. Yeah. Well, before. we went we went on the river and we hooked three yeah, five we caught, pounders. We got we weren't even targeting largemouth. Yeah. We caught river largemouth. Yeah. We had we had fished like a lake in a long wow. time. Yeah. So we were really blind going into it. So it's a big difference. It really is. And but I guess there is some satisfaction that when you're a co angler, like you don't have to pick where to go on the lake, so to speak, right? So like going into it, that should have been a little bit yeah. less nerve wracking. Like. You guys control what you yeah. control. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you're definitely up to the mercy of the boater. Yes, a hundred percent. But then, so like with that said, going into Friday, what were your strategies when it comes to baits and execution and, and what did you bring? So the main thing that I was throwing the entire time was shaky head drop shot and a jerk bait. I had other stuff rigged up, but I didn't throw them as much, but that's, all I caught them on was shaky head and jerk bait. Yeah. Or shaky head and drop shots. Sorry. Yeah. So we recently, recently picked up, um, I bought a couple of refurbished Dobbins rods. Mm -hmm. I got a cool. seven five Sierras. Uh, I got a pretty good price for them and we got them to, to throw the mag draft around because we've heard a lot of good things about it and I really wanted to use it. Um, so that was, I had one fish on that. You didn't, you didn't catch anything. I, I was throwing it, but I wasn't catching anything on it. Yeah, well, it was pretty pretty finessey day yeah. it seemed like, but I did I did catch one of the, one of the three pounders that that got me ninth place was on was on a mag draft. Um, other than that, I threw just a Vision One Ten Junior, the like a white it was spawn cherry, and then I was throwing a four inch white jerk shads on a drop shot, and that caught my other Why? three pounder. But other than yeah, I didn't catch anything on like shaky head or jig or anything. But we did have we did bring some, down some Rogers jigs, the the smallie jigs, uh, because we knew it was probably going to be kind of kind of a tough bite. Mm -hmm. We wanted something small and finessey. Yeah, didn't get anything. I used it for a while, but yeah, it didn't happen. I was following, so my boater was actually throwing a full size jig a lot, like throwing it up into the brush and everything. And every time he'd pull out and stop casting there, I would cast the drop shot in there. And that's where I call one of my fish. Is he cast in there, took it out, I cast it right in there, same exact spot, and hooked a little fish, pulled it in. That was smaller lure. Yeah. More finesse. Well, let, let's kind of go blow by blow here. And, um, I don't know. Let's go with Matt first, I guess. So you draw your boater. What is that like? Like, who is he? So should I, should I put out his name? Or, I don't want to <laughs> yeah, put out his name, but, um, well, give he, him a fake name. We'll call him Jim. Uh, Jim. Jim okay. so, Becky. I don't yeah, know. So, Becky. <laughs> Go with Becky. So no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> so Jim, uh, he pulled up. Daniel's got there first. Yeah. Um, I was kind of standing there for a little while because we got there kind of early. Um, okay. so I was standing there. I was like, kind of like, you know, we're you know, starting to get a little bit nervous because I saw 
people rolling in and I was like just standing there with my rods. I'm like, my motor. <laughs> yeah. But he, he now, got there eventually. And have you met Jim before? Mm-hmm. Did you already get, have a phone call with him? Like, did you get a vibe for like what he wants to yeah, do? Yeah. I talked to him the the night before we both talked to our motors the night before uh, I gave him a call. He did some pre-fishing. So he had, he had a spot that he wanted to go to. He said he caught, he actually did pretty good the day before. Um, caught, he said he caught a bunch of three pounders and some smaller ones. So that gave me a little bit of relief. Um, but I, I talked to him for a little while while we were sitting, uh, sitting in like the pouring rain and darkness. I talked to him for a while and uh, got to know him a little bit. But he, uh, it was also the the launch was really confusing too. He had we we got a, a late launch because we yeah. didn't hear our number. But we got out there pretty quick. It, it was freezing though, and as soon as like we stood up, we went straight to docks. We started fishing docks immediately. It was a little tough getting getting started because my hands were like shaking and I was trying to throw. I started off throwing an Okashira actually, and I couldn't do anything with it. So I started throwing like the mag draft and stuff around and he was he was just beating the docks with a finesse worm. And I was just fall, trying to follow up and I was casting out to out in the middle of the cove into a little bit deeper water. Mm-hmm. Um, it did take a probably it only took 30, 45 minutes for him to get into a fish off of a dock, but it was, it was pretty small. Um, but he was following a, a graph for the whole, whole time. He was um, scoping. He did. He, he wasn't scoping, but he was, he was following. Um, it wasn't live scope, but it was side, whatever, side scan or something. Yeah. Whatever it was. Um, it wasn't that high tech, yeah. but he uh, ended up pulling a fish up. Like he hooked one. It was a good size fish too. I saw his rod really go down like when when he hooked into it um pulled it up i think it was 20 feet of water 18 20 feet out in the middle of the cove and he he set the hook on it and then it shook it and i got the mag draft out real quick and flipped it past it and let let it sink down pretty far and that's one of the three pounders that i think it was the same fish as well that that ended up eating the mag draft after it shook the the uh finesse worm so whoa, he, whoa, I okay, think he okay. was a little hold, hold on, hold on. So for the people at home here, so basically you see this dock, you have you already have the mag draft in your hand, right? And then so this fish shakes off and then you just immediately flip in there, or did you switch rods while all this chaos was going on? So he so he was he was in he was fishing docks and then he switched around, he turned his boat. So we were kind of facing, you know, because like the middle was right here, and then there was a little cove right here, but we were fishing these docks, and he kind of turned away from from the dock and turned out into the middle and he was he was like watching his graph out in the middle trying to find where they were because they were he said they were on docks the day before they were all up under the docks but they didn't really seem to be there so he was starting to look around out in the middle and i was i think i was throwing the mag draft i was throwing the mag draft on the jerk bait like pretty much the whole morning i'd already caught i caught one like dang it was like six inches six seven inches um but nothing really that great that happened but um he once he turned around he hooked the the three pounder and then once i got in there with the mag draft that's when i got that one and we kept fishing around that cove i did pick up another 14 and a half i think it was off of the jerk bait so how are you feeling you got two in the boat in your very first tournament ever in history in the back of a boat of bfl oh i felt pretty good i was and he he had told me i was because i was you know, trying to be like, well, I don't know, you know, I just, I just want to do all right. And he was like, oh, you'll, you know, if you're doing this good this early, he's like, you're probably going to get a check. He's like, you're, you're probably doing better. Cause I was doing better than he was at that point. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you're probably going to get something. And I was like, okay. What, was know. Jim an older I mean, guy or being, a younger guy? He was, he was a little bit older. He was probably like 40, 50. So, okay. yeah, he was, I mean, he was a little bit more old. He was a little bit more old school. Seemed like, um, he had something to say about the whole like live scope, uh, forward facing. Does he, he give he off Randy Brock that. So vibes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely a little bit, a little bit more old school. But um, yeah. So besides, I felt pretty good. Besides being deprived of sleep, not having slept at all, and <laughs> kind of empty stomach because we didn't eat dinner either, and I was drinking a Red Bull in the yeah. morning. So I was, little, I was a little, I was a little, I was a little like shaken up, but I felt good. Um, the bite definitely did slow down a lot after that. And the only fish I got after that was probably 
like an hour, hour and a half later, we fished that cove pretty hard. And then we, we pushed out and we were fishing the bank like outside of the cove. And I, I saw this, like he was, he was um, still flipping into the docks with a finesse worm. And I was just following up with whatever. And then I saw this like patch of, sandy looking like lighter colored um bottom and i was like that kind of looks like beds because it was you know oh, looked kind of circular so i was like so i said something i said something to him i was like i was like you might have cast that it was like kind of looks like a bed and but i felt kind of stupid saying it because like, well billy was saying that with how warm yeah. it was prior to that that there was going to be an early yeah. spawn unless we got a cold spurt. Yeah, yeah. but I, I guess felt, we did get a cold spurt. I felt, yeah, but I felt kind of stupid saying, the, like, it looks like a bed right there as if we're like, <laughs> free, you know, sitting there like freezing. <laughs> but he didn't really, you know, he didn't really do anything. He was like, maybe, I don't know. And they kept going. So I was like, you know, whatever. So I flipped the drop shot right onto it. And that's when I pulled out my second three, three and a half pounder right off of it. And he was like, Dude, you called it, man. <laughs> that is a baller move to your buzz. Oh, like, can, I, can I throw out that stump? Yeah. Wham. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, because I, I I told him about it too, because I was like, I'd already gotten a three, and I kind of wanted to like, I felt bad about like coming back, you know, getting the rebound on his fish, so I wanted to be like, hey man, you know that there's something right right there, and he just ignored it and kept going, kept skipping under docks, so you know, but that was that was really cool to to see that. It was weird because it was like three feet of water, but I don't know, I'm not complaining. We did we did fit. That was like the first four hours too it was like the morning that was like 11 11 30 um hmm. we went to a different area we went, we went south down the lake a bit more and um fished in another area and he ended up doing pretty good he pulled out a four pounder and i think if i think a two pounder and then a dink so he ended up with four fish i didn't catch anything in the whole second section that we went to which was really weird so it was just kind of kind of uh, stressed out because I just pulled like three out and then, or four technically three keepers. Um, and then I like stopped catching anything, but I still, I still ended up with a pretty good bag. So, yeah. yeah. When did you feel confident though? Like, I think there's like so many emotions when it's your first tournament and the fact, like I, I think I probably sucked my very first tournament first couple. And then this is yours at a BFL and Okay, you get a three pounder on a mag draft. You're like, all right, all right. It calms your shoulders. That you, you feel a little looser. Like you can breathe a little bit easier. Did you ever have that moment in the day where it's like, oh crap, I might have gotten a check? Yeah, I was like, once I got the second three, or well, once I got the first one, I was like, okay, you know, I think I can do this. But then I, I kind of, I was kind of thinking that everybody else was going to be doing that too. So I wasn't getting my hopes up that much because I was like, well, if I can, you know, if I could do that, then they must be sort of active. Um, once I pulled out the second three pounder, I was definitely like, you know, like, okay, I might've done something, you know, I might be, hopefully I'll at least get my entry fee. I was feeling pretty good, but I was, I definitely wanted to get more. I know I was kind of, um, uh, kind of anxious about it towards the end. Cause I, I knew I could, cause I was watching my boater pull out fish. You know, he was pulling out like pretty quickly. He pulled up three fish off of a uh, row of docks within like probably 30 minutes. And then I kind of got anxious because I wasn't doing anything. And that kind of threw me off, kind of kind of dampened my spirits a little bit. But I was still I was still feeling pretty good about the bag I had. So So before we go to weigh in, um, let's go over to Daniel. And Daniel, do we have to give uh, your butter an alias? Yeah, I'll go ahead, mainly because I forgot his name. But <laughs> uh, we'll call him we'll call him Jimmy just to keep it simple. That yeah. is not going to help me out. Let's... <laughs> no, I'll call him Billy. Not <laughs> Billy. <laughs> not Billy Coles, though. He wasn't busy. <laughs> okay. So you so call Billy Friday night. There, what is that like? So I was I was texting Billy. <laughs> and all right, So texting Billy, and he was like, give me a call as soon as you can. So I go outside. I call him. And the first thing he says is like, what's up, Daniel? Yeah. I tried to start my boat the other day, and it didn't start. And I was like, oh, um, I hope you fixed it. And he was like, yeah, I went out yesterday, but I didn't catch anything. And I was like, oh, okay. He was like, but I was on business calls and everything the whole time. So I was like, okay, whatever. He didn't catch anything. I'm not that worried about it. He asked what I was going to be throwing. That's what I'm mainly going to be throwing finesse. And he was like, okay, yeah, he's probably going to be throwing these full-size jigs and jerk baits. I'm like, okay, so we're going to 
kind of be a little opposite. That I was kind of looking forward to that because yeah. I could follow him up a lot. Well, that's what that's what we were told was by I think Throw you and, and Jared and yeah. a few other people said said that to kind of throw what you know throw what they weren't throwing. Yeah, and, do the opposite. We yeah, like, yeah. Our goal was definitely to go a little bit more finesse than yeah the average largemouth fisherman, I guess, because that's what we do. That's so, what we were really looking forward to because yeah. when we're on the river, we're fishing finesse like basically all year round. Yeah, so we're pretty pretty good at it, I'd say. Yeah, we're. All right. <laughs> um, well, no, but, you guys are, and you're fishing your strength, which is really smart. That's something I think you and Jared told us was to stay sticking to what we know how to do. Yeah. And again, like how Matt started fishing the cove when it was deeper, Jared told us to do that. Is yeah, to if kind of come off of the docks yeah, a little bit. If your boat is on the dock, turn around, do a three, do one eighty, and fish out there. And yeah, there could be fish out there, but tournament day, we pull up. He pulls up the time that we arranged, which was like. 4 a.m. So we're really tired going off 30 minutes of sleep. Well, I got 30 minutes of sleep. Yeah. He didn't get anything. And we get there and we start talking and he's a really nice guy. He's helped, he's fished a lot of tournaments. He's fished very high up tournaments. I think he said he fished one of the classics and he's, oh, cool. he's won a boat. Yeah. He, he has two boats. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. And so he's, we're just talking. We get on the boat. He seemed really interested in my YouTube channel. I show him a video. Seems really, he's a really nice guy. I had a lot of fun just talking with him. And then launch comes. I'm already wet. We start going. Hit like 60 miles an hour. And my pants that are supposed to be waterproof, water resistant are soaking wet. It feels like I just jumped in the water. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm just like bundled up, <laughs> shaking on the whole ride. And we get there and I kind of stand up while I'm shivering. And He's like, all right, let's go. And he's he's got live scope. He's looking down at most of the entire time. We both pick up jerkbait, and I didn't realize. So I throw the jerkbait down. I pick up this shaky head, which might not be the the best of color that I, to choose that exact day. Yeah, but the water the water was a little stained, but yeah. we only brought green pumpkin. But there was a lot of brush around the uh, bottom that we were fishing, and he actually saw the fish go to my lure when I hooked it. So I, I threw to the left of where he was, was barely moving it, just twitching a little bit, bumping up on the sticks. And he said after I hooked it, he saw the fish dart towards it. And I hooked Dude, it. that's so cool. Reeled it in. Oh. My fingers are barely working. <laughs> My fingers are barely working, so I can barely hold on to, like, the uh, reel. I get it in. It's, like, it's the biggest fish I caught the entire time. It was probably, like, three to three and a quarter pounds. Put that in the boat, and I'm like, all right. And that was, like, within the first 20 minutes. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Might be able to do something here. Yeah. And then we get, keep going like 30 minutes later. He hasn't caught anything. I haven't caught anything else. And I pick up drop shot, throw it in the back with a little robo worm. It was green on top, purple on the bottom, just to give it a little more flash because the water clarity. I hook a teeny tiny little thing, maybe a pound, <laughs> get him in the boat. And I'm like, okay. I throw him back in there. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that'll help me out a little bit. But another like, Ugh, I don't know, probably what, what hour and a now? half. Ugh, like, like 10. Maybe. Maybe like nine. At the earliest, it's t or okay. at the latest, it's 10. It's probably like nine. Three, but you got time. Another hour and a half. Yeah. And nothing. Not seeing anything. The balls of fish that he was following on live scope, we're not seeing him anymore. And we're, we're back in this cove. There's no docks or anything. He wanted to fish back in the coves to start out. And hour and a half goes by. He's like, all right, let's make a run to these docks. And we go to these docks. Didn't catch anything. Nothing the entire time. So we go to a different cove, pretty close to the first one. We go back there. And this is when he starts throwing his big full-size jig up into piles of trees and stuff that are coming out from the bank into the water. And I'm just following up on everything that he does. And then he throws into one. Comes out with nothing. I throw the drops out in there within like two seconds. I hook another one, get him in the boat. Hands barely work, even worse than they were the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reeling it in. I get it in. It's probably a two pounder. Yeah, probably two pounder. And throw him in there. And he's he's praising me. He's like, man, you're doing really good for your first tournament. <laughs> and it starts to make me feel pretty good about myself. Um, so I'm starting to think, man, and I might I might catch a check. I'll I might get my entry fee back. Yeah. I'm gonna be pretty happy. <laughs> And then, so you got three, three, right? You got three at this point. It was three and three, yeah. Yeah, we both got three. I had three at that point, and for maybe the next 
hour or two, didn't catch anything. So we go to a different set of docks. He still hasn't caught anything. We go to a different set of docks and he's throwing the jerk bait around. So I'm picking up drop shot and I'm pitching into the dock, casting to farther docks right at the po- posts of the dock. So that, that's something Billy told us to do Yeah, was throw drop shot right at the post. And I hook a little one and I'm trying to get him in because I can tell he's a keeper, but he's barely a keeper. <laughs> so I'm trying to get him in with my frozen hands and I can't hold it right. So I'm like gripping the handle like this, <laughs> reeling it in. And he gets in the boat and it gets off. And I'm trying not to get too upset about it. So I'm like, it's whatever. It's whatever. It's not going to cost me anything. And I was wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. didn't your boat lose? Like, oh, I completely yeah. forgot about that. So at the very beginning, oh, he also called a like an eight pound striper to eight to 10 pound yeah, striper yeah, yeah. right at the beginning, right after I caught mine on the jerk bait, which is probably what wow. he was seeing on live scope. He gets that in. I'm like, man, that's a big fish. And then he throws it back really quick and then he starts fishing again and maybe like 10 minutes later he sees something falling into the boat and i look up and i see this giant splash right at the boat and he's like man that thing got off i don't know was that was that you think that was a bass that looked green i was like <laughs> that, that was green that wasn't white it, it, if it was a if it was a large out it was probably eight to ten pounds it was huge Good lord yes. but yeah he would have won big bass for sure jeez <laughs> But that was rough. Anyways, I would have been, been upset. Yeah, I would have too. But, but after I lost that little one, we didn't get any action at all for mm-hmm. the entire rest of the time. And he went to a spot where on a, the other side of the lake, and it was actually like two or three degrees colder than yeah the that, spot that, is, that we were on. So my my boat noticed that too. And once we once we moved like down more, it it changed from like what was it? It was like maybe fifty. It was like fifty one in the coves yeah, that we started like fifty two, fifty three down down further that yeah. was that was really weird how the water changed i didn't i didn't really expect that i expected it was going to be more consistent yeah did you guys ever think about pulling out like a rogers jig a tube or a ned rig just the classic was, peanut butter and jelly yeah i was throwing a pb and j rock i did too jig actually with yeah. a crawl i didn't get anything on it i was hmm. throwing it i was switching up what i was throwing a lot but i was mainly just trying to stick to drop shot and shaky head yeah but so we, I, we got I, to this one point where he's seeing a bunch of fish on the bottom. We think they're bass. They're moving around. And, like, between 15 and 30 feet of water, they're just moving around on the bottom. And we can't get any hooks. So I'm throwing a shaky head right in front of their face. They're not doing a drop shot right in front of their face. Everything right in front of their face, they're not hitting it. And then he starts throwing. We start going back into the cove right beside us. It's a little – there's, like, one or two docks in it. And he starts throwing a finesse crankbait, like a really small sized crawl crankbait. And he hooks one little fish that is just barely a keeper. Yeah, I think he was like one pound. Yeah, it was like a pound, and that's the only fish he caught. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to head back in. And- yeah. That is that was that was really weird. You you reminded me that um after I caught the we were on our way out. I so I caught the first three pounder and he made a comment to me because I was throwing the mag draft out into like fifteen you know, the 15, 20 foot section. And he made a comment to me. He was like, there's, there's like fish, there's fish following your lure right now. I was like, really? And that's all he said. He didn't say any, you know, he wasn't like helping me out much more than that. But, um, you know, there were definitely fish following the mag graph yeah. um, out of that, like, you know, 15, probably 10 foot. Um, Cause I was casting a lot closer to the bank then. Um, they just didn't seem to want to commit I did. I did seem to have a little bit more success on a jerk bait. I did. I did miss one more too did that I forgot about. Yeah, um, that was actually before the three pounder that I I was throwing the vision, and he swiped at it. It was probably like two three pounds. Uh, it looked like swiped at it at the boat, and I missed it. But would have put you up higher. Yeah, but well, let's, yeah, let's they just seemed they now. were definitely. Oh no! F- f- finish your thought, Matt. Oh, you're good. You can go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, so good. we go to weigh in because um, I want to I want to talk about weigh in and then I want to kind of go like hindsight 2020 type of vibe. So yeah, whoever wants to go first about like you get there. Did you guys just know, like, it's in the bank? No problem. We made it. Um, got, I, Matt, yeah. I feel like you you feel pretty confident. Yeah. So I was I was second wave. So I got there um, a little bit quicker than he did. Um, I, I was pretty I, I don't know. I saw a lot of guys. 
<laughs> walking away from their boats because, you know, we docked and there were like a couple of guys docked next to us. And I saw these guys picking up probably like 15 pound bags, like, you know, full, full bag. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> got a little nervous. Um, but I figured that most of them were probably boaters. So it made me feel a little bit better, but, um, I, I went and, you know, got the bags and then my boater and I walked up there and I went first and I, the dude, um, that I thought he was going to throw away mine. The one of the, the 14, he ended up throwing away, um, my boaters, one of my boaters fish. Cause it was undersized. Apparently it was under 14 and we measured it and it was definitely above 14, but the dude didn't think it was. So, um, hmm. but anyways, I went up and, and he gave me, so my official weight was eight, eight, seven, eight pounds, seven ounce. Yeah, something like that. Um, so that made me feel pretty good. He said as of, as of the second wave, I was sixth overall, which did make me feel pretty good. Yeah. I was pretty happy about that. And my boater reassured me about it. He was like, Oh, you're definitely going to get, get money. But then I was like, well, there's like five more waves coming in. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, I was like, what if somebody brings in like, what if some co-angler brings in like six pounder? <laughs> so, but I was, I was trying to be, you know, I was, I was pretty happy with it regardless. So, yeah. and then by the time, cause I was helping my boater, um, I actually backed his trailer up as he was loading up. Yeah, I was surprised when I, my boater launched, he's like, you think you can pull, pull the trailer out? Park oh, yeah. me? I was like, you're going to let me, you just met me. You're going to let me do that. Did, I was like, yeah. yeah, I can do that. So did mine. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so, do you know where I grow up? I actually, Man, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so you, cause I, when I was backing up, he actually walked right behind. Like I saw him walk behind me and I was, I was like looking around, like trying to back up and he was like in the way. Mm -hmm. I saw him walk by because that was after you weighed in, right? So I was I was there for probably twenty minutes before you were. Yeah, but when we pulled up, I saw where you guys were parked, so I was like, all right, I gotta go talk to him, see how he did. Yeah. But yeah, so when I went up there, I we went in and I was like, man, if we were doing this low, everyone else probably did this low too. So I was like, I, I'll probably do okay. And we go in and we go in, we see the winner, so we see him, and he just pulls out that seven pounder he caught. <laughs> It just holds it up. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> um, that kind of lowered my confidence a little bit, and I was like, man, all mine are less than half the size. But I was like, okay, we'll see how we do. So I go up, I get a bag, put the fish in there, walk up there, and I was. He told me about the 14 that they threw away. So I remeasured mine, and it was yeah. my smallest one was barely over 14. So like, I hope they don't throw that away. They ended up not. So I got lucky. I go up there, put in, I waited in at 604 and the uh, two people or two or three people that were right above me beat me by one ounce. <laughs> and that little two pounder that I lost the boat, that probably would have, it would have put like, me top 10 most likely. You'd have been like at least probably 10. Yeah. Maybe 11. If, it, if it was two pounds, I would have been number 10, but yeah. I ended up being number 16 at the very end. So I still cashed a check. 17. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it was. Well, yeah. I say, uh, so. you were the very last person to get a check at seventeenth. Yes. <laughs> but and, and what's interesting there is like you just said, like you guys exactly. had room to grow. Where if Daniel fill fill out yeah. his limit, you know he gets a top ten. Matt, if you fill out your limit, I mean, shit, that's top three, maybe yeah. top two. Yeah, that's what that's what I was kind of I was kind of upset about that because I had that like four or five hour window where I didn't catch anything. Yeah. And that's when my boater, you know, I remember, I remember getting really discouraged when I saw my boater, like flip, it was actually the shallow side of a dock and he pulled out, it was like three feet of water, pulled out a four pounder. And I was like, like, come on. <laughs> Cause I couldn't catch, I, 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 whatever I was doing was wrong. I couldn't catch anything yeah. in that, in that separate section. Um, that's so something I, I wish my boater would have done was go to docks first Yeah. because by the time we went there, they were fished out. I mean, people were like people leaving when we got there. Yeah. Like one other boat was there when we were there. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't you guys try a Ned rig or something like that, like Uber finesse? Out of curiosity. So mainly just because the water clarity and the depth that my boater was fishing. Honest and honestly, I, I don't. When we're on the river, I don't throw a Ned rig that much. Yeah. So I didn't have. I mean, I've <laughs> thrown it, but I don't throw it all the time. I mean, rarely do I go out and tie a net rig on. So I didn't have that much conf I just have more confidence in a drop shot. Yeah. 
honestly, more than more Drop than shot's anything. one of my most confident lures, even as on the of, river. If as of, like, this past year. Yeah, if they're not biting on the river and you throw a drop shot on, they're going to bite. Yeah. So that's what – I mean, it ended up – I threw a drop shot, and then I threw up an S jig. And I figured that would be good enough, to, you know, close yeah. enough to an S jig. Uh, just what I usually throw, I figured, you know, I'd go with what I'm used to. But maybe I should have thrown an Ed rig. Maybe I should have thrown – a smaller shaky head, but I don't know. No, it's just interesting because I, I, I definitely learned things from, from every conversation. And, and what's interesting here is how nobody likes to throw super finesse stuff because they think it like attacks their masculinity to an extent. Cause like, I'm saying this for like all the people I hang out with, they're like, I would rather get castrated with blunt rocks than ever throw an Ed rig. Um, <laughs> Hunter, I know that's what you said. It, if you're listening to this and it's so <laughs> interesting, it's like, it's so interesting at this level where people are like that. Like, I don't want to go super finesse, but you look at some of these Japanese anglers and they're winning on spinning tackle. And then you guys, you know, did extremely well with spinning tackle, just going behind people with, with drop so shots and, and cleaning house. Yeah. So I actually, so we both brought five rods. You brought five. Yeah. Right? I brought five. Yeah. So I brought three spinning rods and two, two casting. Yeah. I actually had two. So I had two medium lights and one medium action with me and that's what honestly i mean i caught the one actually i was throwing a jerk bait on my on a casting rod and then i was throwing the mag draft so those had some of the fish mm -hmm. but honestly for the majority of the time i was throwing my medium lights yeah. so wow well i feel some big like bass big lake bass fishermen think if you're throwing too light they're gonna you're not gonna be able to pull the fish in oh, yeah. but i mean in the winter i just bought a new light action rod for drop shot it, it is a little stiff to be the light action but I had eight pound test eight on pound that line. and I landed a like 17 pound carp. I mean, as long as you're fighting the fish, right, you're going to land it. You're not going to yeah. lose a fish. Well, I've, caught, too I've caught some of my biggest fish on, I'm mean, usually yeah. I, like six or eight pound and 10 max. I mean, I've thrown, I've thrown like 10, maybe 12 on, on a bait caster, but most of my fish have come off light wire hooks, yeah. like eight pound line. So, and a like really light, I mean, one of my medium lights, that I was throwing drop shot with honestly could be like a trout rod. It's really light, but it's just what we're used to. Yeah. And what works. Well, so. it, yeah. And I don't know. It's just to me, it's so interesting. Like how many stories I keep hearing of this, of like you getting, if you're a boater and you're throwing a big jig or whatever, and you're getting your butt handed to you by the guy in the back of the boat, because yeah, they're just shaky head drop shot, tiny swim bait. And it's like, it's the same thing the pros are doing, but it's like a lot of these guys at this level don't, want to throw that even though it makes sense so and good on you guys thank you a lot of people think it's boring to throw but i guess we throw it so much we kind of enjoy I, it yeah i enjoy throwing, <laughs> i enjoy throwing like lighter stuff yeah. i don't know people don't like throwing it seems like bottom contact stuff a lot of the time but yeah. i enjoy throwing like a jig or a drop shot just as much or if not more than like a jerk bait so but that's just i mean that's just me personally yeah but so with that said, your first one's under your belt. You guys both cash a check. What's next in your great adventures? We'll April be going, 4th. Yeah, April 4th, we'll be going down the Smith Mountain again, fishing that one. So yeah, hoping we're going to do pretty good it'll on that a, one. So that'll be probably middle of spawn. I don't some, some part of spawn. It might be early spawn, I think. Maybe early. Early to middle, maybe. Yeah. But, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, that'll be – we don't really – I don't fish spawn – we don't usually i've gone to lake fish. frederick a few times for yeah. bed fishing I've never, that's it. I've never been with you to fish yeah. fish like frederick but i mean i don't fish the river i don't like to fish the river anyways when they're spawning i just like to, to kind of give it a break because they always have such a hard time and yeah. usually the river's blown out anyways it's usually like brown water i don't know i caught like two 19s uh, last year off of yeah. beds yeah. on the river <laughs> yeah. they, they did have a good spawn last year but that was the first time i've really seen you know fish on beds i don't really really see them that often so yeah but it'll be interesting i mean i caught the one off of a bed yeah. i i think i think That's whatever it was early bed fish. um but i mean we you know we, we throw drop shot we throw small finesse baits so if they're on beds i think we're gonna do pretty good yeah because how often we throw small things and sometimes those bed fish only are gonna eat something really small because learning at lake frederick I mean, I, if i throw like a wacky rig i've learned that they will pick up the side of that and not engulf it, they will swim it away and drop it. Yeah. And that just makes you so mad. So it, I started to downsize and they can't yep. just pull part of it. They, yeah, if you're they throwing, end like up a, grabbing the hook. Yeah, if you're throwing like a Ned rig, they can't really just, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's honestly, that's like one of the secrets that well, blow it out of the box here is like a Ned rig or even the micro TRD is it's as stupid, tiny, and sad as it is. It is a deadly spawn bait. It is so freaking deadly because it is, it's a crappie yeah. jig basically. Like if yeah. they try to grab it, they will get a hook. <laughs> well, we talked about that too. Like I think it's in the winter too. Like a lot, it sounds like a lot of crappie fishermen will sometimes end the day with like five or six pound largemouth, you know, just like yeah. out of nowhere on a little crappie jig. So it goes to show that they do eat you know, really small and you know, they'll eat like a six inch swim bait, but they'll also eat like a three and two, yeah, a three <laughs> inch or two inch even. So, yeah. It's interesting stuff. And it's just to be staying flexible because sometimes they, just, if, if live scope has told us anything, it's the fact that big fish will eat peanuts and it's, it's yeah. knowing when, not to be afraid to go down to a medium light rod. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Well, I think I think the other benefit too, uh, with with us throwing medium lights is we're used to throwing that like eight pound eight pound line. Yeah. So and we know how to, we know how to fight the fish inside the drag with such yeah. a light wire line. Well, I think I mean, if you watch like TV and stuff, you know, like professionals, they like horse you know, it's like out of there. hard hooks at and then like reeling it like surfing across the surface and and you know we don't we don't. I mean, I let the fish play. You know, I let I let it peel drag, and let it do it. You know, Get it I fight it. So I fight it naturally. Off. Yeah. There's been times where if I horse the fish in, and it shakes the boat, it'll shake that hook. But if you let it play just a little bit, it'll get too tired to where you can just hold into the net and you're good. Yeah. So and I did notice that with my boater, he was horsing. really, you know, really like yanking him out of there, like hard hook sets and stuff. And yeah, I, I just wasn't doing that. And, seem to work out so yeah i want to also talk about time, at the, at, yeah. oh go for it oh i was just saying when uh, there are times when you do need a rough hook set but yeah. when you're throwing finesse and you set it hard you're just ripping it out of their mouth yeah oh we, we could go down a whole rabbit hole about that about matching up your ultralight your hooks all that because that's mm -hmm. a system that has to play and yeah. it's just as important as like the big swim bait stuff where you got to have a stout rod and thick hooks, but on the flip side, if you want to make sure that light game works, you got to make sure the hooks are the are matching the rod. If, if the hooks are too light compared to a heavy rod, you break you break um, the hook. If you got too wimpy of a rod and the hook's too thick, you're never going to get them pegged. I mean, it, it's a science. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Daniel, we talked about this a little bit in passing, which uh, at the kayak show. You caught an absolute donkey football. I'll yeah. tell us again. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I got this all on video on my YouTube channel. So you can always go check it out. But the whole day started me and our friend, we, that we met, he saw my YouTube channel and we ran into him on the river. So now we go fishing sometimes okay. and we go land at his works landing and we're just fishing around, not catching much. Well, I actually got there. I had a, Oh yeah, you did so get there late. They they were there for like probably f three four hours before I got there. Yeah. So, and you guys had caught a few. Yeah. Minutes. So for the first like thirty minutes, I was fishing like where Matt told me because I had no idea about that area, but Matt's fished it a lot. So I was fishing where he told us, not getting anything. So we go off to the other side where it's completely different than the side he told us to fish. It told us to fish, and throwing a little little finesse jig one of rogers jigs on eight pound line hook into like an 18 first and then like two casts later in 19 same wow. hole so we start backing up getting into that hole he hooks one it gets off of the boat it's probably 17 i think i catch another 18 and another 19 and the first 19 i caught was actually really big for a 19 inch fish it was super fat. fat. Yeah, it was yeah. super fat. So they were definitely starting to get their metabolism up and eat things. But then after that, we start going out more. Don't hook into anything for another like hour. So we start floating back down to that hole. And I think I hook a little one. And then Matt texts me. He says he's getting close. So we start floating back down to the landing and start fishing right below the landing. And I hook like two little dinks. They're probably like 15 inch fish. But Matt gets in and we're like, all right, let, let's go up to the spot where we were catching him because we didn't catch anything where he told us to fish. <laughs> yeah. And we go up there. Me and our buddy, we were going up. We get to the spot we were sitting in. We back up to the bank. 
and we just start casting. And I catch a 17 inch smallmouth and then nothing for like 30 minutes. And Matt's on the other side of the river. I'm trying to get him to come over. And I was, well, I was checking because there's, um, I was checking some like springs and stuff. Yeah. And I was, I was like watching the water temperature, but I really wasn't doing anything. Yeah. So, so at that point, I'm kind of like relaxing. I got my feet up on the canoe and I'm just casting. And then we's like, maybe we should scoot out a little bit. So I'm like, okay. So I start to, you know, I'm still fishing while he's moving and then reel in slack. And then my line just starts going. I set the hook and it's just screaming drag. It's wow. I hadn't had a fight like that since November of 2022, I think. Yeah. And reeled it in. I'm like, Matt, you got to get over here. This might be a new PV. You got to get over here. And he's like, no, it's not, dude. Stop. <laughs> It's not that big. <laughs> get it in the net. It barely fits in the net because he has one of those triangle nets that if you don't get oh it head first in God. there, it's not going in. But I get it in, and I'm just so excited holding it up. And we're trying to guess the length, and we're, we usually kind of underestimate because I used to overestimate so much when yeah, well, I first started. Had that he would always be like, it's a citation, and then it was like a 19 three yeah. quarter. Oh, yeah. it, it took him forever to get his first citation. Yeah, and I would catch, I caught like four, two, three or four 19 and three yeah. quarter inch fish before I caught his well, catch him. I'd like, we go out and I'd like catch one right in front of him and then he'd open it and it was like a quarter inch short. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, but we get it in, we put it on the board and I'm like, Matt, that's <laughs> 22 and a quarter inches. Yeah. And he's like, oh my God. Because <laughs> I caught one two years prior. The same exact year length. Prior. Or, year prior. Yeah, year prior. The same exact length. And then same we weigh it. And, no, and then we weigh it, and it's six pounds, five ounces, which was the same exact weight as the one I caught prior. So yeah. it was the same exact size fish as I caught a year. In, it wasn't the same fish. I different, doubt it. Different stretch of river, Completely different so. stretch. Yeah. But I was super hyped for that. Yeah. Dude. Guys, you gotta go check out the YouTube, uh, the YouTube video on his channel. Again, I'll link that in the episode description. Um, Matt, I mean, just to make sure that you're not excluded from this, did you have a fish catch that really sticks out to you in your mind? I mean, I haven't gotten a 22 yet. That's what I've been. You gotten some big citations. Though. Oh, I've, I've definitely gotten. I've, I've been stuck on 21. Um, so the last, I mean, we had we did have the the recent recent time that we went out, and I was I was pretty much exclusively throwing a mag draft. And I ended up because we, we, we he were, killed it that day. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were at a spot that what we knew they were musky. So we started out with throwing a steel leader on, and we I remember seeing like a 19 yeah. inch fish. But before that, though, I hooked one large mouth, and it was probably like 15, 16 inches. It was a little guy. Yeah, and maybe a, one or two little small mouth on yeah. a jig, but it before. After that, nothing. Yeah, but I so I I had seen a, a smallmouth shy away from from my lure because I, I watched it follow and then once it got close to the boat, it just turned away. So after that, we we took off the the leaders, yeah. and then we went up we went upstream a little bit a bit more, and eventually I hooked into a five pound largemouth, which is for, for of, our it's river. really really hard to do. It's kind of a, a yeah. If you fish the Shenandoah, yeah. you you know that you you will see giant largemouth, but you will not get them to bite. Yeah, it's really hard to get the river largemouth to eat yeah. uh, around here. But I, I figured out how to make make that one eat. Um, I ended up catching a twenty inch smallmouth too, like a little wow. a little while after that. Caught a couple smaller. That was a really thin citation too. It was like three pound fourteen ounce. Yeah, for and for a citation, that's like a pound less than what it normally yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, but um, I did caught catch a couple smaller ones and then eventually hooked into a five uh five pound twelve ounce that was right after yeah. he had so, gotten he had gotten what was a five three i got a five three because we we're flo we paddled up away from the landing and we started floating back down and he actually cast it off what he was throwing yeah and, I, I lost the mag drafts I yeah had to yeah so oh, i started man. going down I'm just, all this is also on my YouTube channel, by the way. So you can always go check that out, but I'm yeah, link in the episode description. Fishing, I'm, yeah, I'm going down river, casting down river and reeling in really slowly, just kind of working it close to the bottom. And I just feel something thump. So I, you don't set the hook hard with how we have it set up because you do with it. The treble hook. Yeah. With the treble hook, you're going to rip it out of the mouth. So you just kind of 
pull on them, kind of lean into it. Oh yeah, so I I I real set with with it. I kind of I kind of tuck it. Yeah, like into my arm and like just point the rods it down so I get it like under my armpit and then hold it down like that. I don't even really like grip the trigger. I just kind of grip the reel and just really just reel into it until you really feel the weight of the fish. Yeah. It seemed to really, you know, cause I, there were a couple times that I did get excited and, and set it a little bit and definitely pulled it out of the fish's yeah. mouth. So yes. But yeah. So after, after you caught the five, that one, your five pounder. Yeah. I, it was like probably five, 10 minutes. After yeah. That, well, I, another. I said, it, I said like, you really think we're going to catch another five pounder? Can we catch three in one day <laughs> in the same spot? And then like five minutes later, yeah. he's like, I, I got another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah that one that one was that was actually my personal best large mouth yeah because we never fit i mean we never fish lakes or anything so that yeah. five, the five pound 12 was my new new personal best so and it actually beat his by and like ounce or two, ounce like two or two. Ounces. And, but so. prior actually that same spot uh i caught another five pound large mouth in the winter like not last winter but the winter prior we went out there and i saw a little or I had a little finesse jig on and I saw a school of large use, so I cast it into it and I could see the big one go and take it. So maybe it's something about that area that we fish that they're more yeah. active, but I don't know. Well, I, we've, we fished, I've fished separate areas. Um, you weren't with me at that time, but I, I have fished separate areas on the river that um, I've pulled out like 19 inch small mouth. You've got it was four recently pound like four pound large mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I do get, I, we do have to get on the, on the small mouth game. We've got a couple tournaments couple kayak tournaments going on now and we're yeah we're pretty low on the leaderboard so. i'm like no i'm i'm not that low right now i'm like fifth or six but that's just yeah. because it just started and i have i have a full bag but they're all small yeah we we definitely got to get out there more guys and we definitely have to have you on once the small mouth season really gets get, gets going here and uh honestly a couple of weeks i'm hoping april kind of like the wind has just been a shit show where i am and where you guys are where it's just it's not fun. Like rain, a little bit of rain is one thing. A lot of rain sucks. A little bit of rain's okay, but when it's blowing forty miles an hour, it feels like it's like you can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a little anyway. rough, especially when you're <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. But uh, you guys have a forest fire that I believe, or some kind of fire going on. So how about you guys be safe? Uh, yeah, it, it will be all right. It doesn't look too bright outside. It's still dark, so I don't think it's close. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Daniel, Matt, as always, it's an honor to have you guys on the show. I'll probably be seeing you around Jake's Bait and Tackle here sometime. Um, Daniel, aka oh. Big DTV, <laughs> if people want to follow you, where can they follow you? You got me on Instagram. It's big.d.tv, and you got me on YouTube, which is Big D Space TV. And I do I do have an Instagram as yeah. well. It's uh, Shenandoah Bronze Backs with no space. But I don't have a YouTube yet. I, I post on Instagram a lot more often than I post on YouTube. I try to yeah. post a video every week on YouTube to keep you all updated and everything. So, but if there's a time where I can't go out, it won't be more than eleven days without a video. That's the max I'll go without a video. Dude, I, I love I love both you guys' passion. That's what you need to take it on social media. And one one day the algorithm gods are gonna bless you, and your channel is just gonna skyrocket. So just keep Probably. keep grinding and. I texted a big YouTuber on Instagram and he actually responded. I asked him for a tip on how to get more views and he told me the name and it worked. I got more views on my last video yeah. by naming it differently. So format, I guess. Yeah. There you go, boss. That's all it comes down to is just networking. But um, like, subscribe to the channel, guys. It really helps us out in the algorithm. Please go give these two young men a follow as well. Link in the episode description to everything we talked about. And we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.